Right, hey guys, how are we doing? Back in another video from Mother's Basement, and we have got the hottest trash anime of summer 2023. We're gonna get into it. We're gonna check it out. What's the trashiest of the trash out there in this season of trashness? Come in, take a seat. You made it just in time. Ooh. We got a fresh load of anime coming out of the oven as we speak. Ah. Before we dig in, though, I'd like to quickly clear up a common point of confusion I've seen in the comment uh, Yelp reviews for Shea Garbage. Shea Every Garbage. Season, at least one person's offended when I call their favorite anime trash. Now, I know as well that I always go, oh, I can't believe you said that. But like, I, it's just my little thing I like to do. You know, I know this isn't the worst anime of, <laughs> you know. And I totally understand why. But you guys need to understand, trash isn't always a bad thing. I adore trash. The whole reason I do this in the first place is so I can get paid to roll around in the stuff. Damn. So as you're enjoying your meal, please just bear in mind that every roast we serve here at Che Garbage is ultimately made with love. Unless we make it with hate. Stay tuned for Rent a Girlfriend Season 3. Oh, damn. This is the hottest trash of the hottest summer in history. The first thing on tonight's menu is so tasty, I'd unironically call it summer's best anime. Ooh. Zom 100 bucket list. Hey, this is so good. This is so good. Of the Dead is a radical, deeply philosophical, artistic statement about what it truly means to I mean, it does have its trashy moments, though. <laughs> it's also a gleefully violent, unapologetically sexy tribute to grindhouse horror greats in the very specific tradition of High School of the Dead. Yes. Like, they even do that cool thing from the HOTDOP where most of the blood splatters replaced with Technicolor paint only all the time as a consistent aesthetic choice, not just in the opening, which really helps to lighten the mood and set this show apart from its undeniably fun, but also undeniably doomery undead yes. anime inspo. Whereas HOTD, like most post-Snyder zombie trash, paints its apocalypse in very bleak colors outside the opening, saying optimism's for suckers and trusting people's a disease what gets you killed. Zon mm. 100's all about looking on it's the, the bright humans side that of you can't trust. Even in its moments of tragedy, it uses the undead as a persistent reminder of why our liberated wage slave hero Akira and his chadly wannabe comic <laughs> best <laughs> so need to live every day like it might be their last instead of submitting to that grim no fun allowed survivalism that's so typical of the genre yeah, which true. tonally yeah, feels yeah, yeah. a lot more in keeping with all the gynaxiful zombo gazongas and waifu worship it also raises Boops. the conceptual <laughs> ceiling for fun anime nonsense a zombie thing can get away with from slow-mo titty sniping that was just I mental mean, you see that zombie shark on the poster. We were all there when Akira's obese, recently deceased boss popped like a big old water yeah. balloon. This anime <laughs> and the manga it's based on are all about finding the so fun good. and I love feeling it. fine with the end of the world as we know it. Oh no, I just dropped my super cool spoiler safe manga page upon which best girl directly quotes Das Kapital. You know what that means? It's time for a five hour video essay about the evils of capitalism. My God. Because anime and manga was invented by glorious <laughs> revolutionary intellectuals to enlighten and radicalize the proletariat so yeah, they might one was, day rise up why, against... yeah. mm -hmm. I, what was the uh, uh, right <laughs> the perfect fodder for meaningless mindless in no way metaphorical cartoon violence and also for narratively justifying lots of other sexually anarchic forms of fun by tearing down the existing social order a thing the manga generally frames as being cool and good for most people who survive it in a totally apolitical way of course that's what this anime is all about check out this super neat and funny zombie kill of the week why don't you <laughs> Wow, it's like Luffy to the gear five. <laughs> I give HOTD, but it's based actually five dumpsters full of fireworks, horny B movie posters, so and some so good. With if you've not read the manga, I highly, highly recommend it, man. Like I read it as the volumes come out and it's always such a treat to see a new one come out whenever it goes to Waterstone. It's a flaming zombie fart jetting in to set the whole show off. Damn. Now, we 
are getting awful close to serving art with that one. So before that inspector lady comes back, let me just slop some isekai in your plate. Okay, let's go. Cover it up. Am I actually the strongest? Is the thrilling tale of Jesus. a worthless loser shut-in who died alone in his room playing... God, that first episode was something, wasn't it? With the woman's asking the baby to, like, impregnate her. It's like... Ooh, is that what this show is? <laughs> mobile game, and now that he's been given a miraculous second chance and a that is this one, isn't it? Of magic and mystery, all he wants to do is exactly that again. Dude's magic level is so OP that appraisal spells literally can't count that high. And what's he do with it? Build an exact clone of himself to live his boring life of aristocratic luxury yeah, for yeah, him yeah. while he stays in his room all day. Watching anime. <laughs> Pro tip, Isekai writers. Uh, your audience wants to escape from stuff like that. Yeah, I wish I could back. say I respect the commitment <laughs> to never touching grass, but honestly, I don't, and I don't even believe it as a character motivation. I mean, the very first time this dude ever left the house in this world, he managed to magically dominate a sexy, yes. spandex-clad dog demon into damn. begging him to bang her, specifically so that she could make some milk for him to drink, because, oh, I forgot to mention, he was a newborn child yeah, that was at weird. the time. That was you weird. seriously want me to believe that a Hikikomori Otaku degenerate would rather conjure up a knockoff Nintendo Switch and turn his super <laughs> genius polyglot emoto into a magic iPad kid than follow the adventure? Bang. We, he, he would bang. Line ...of an isekai scenario that went from zero to and baby f***ing in five minutes flat? I call bullshit, but... Yeah. No, of course not. They're doing the same thing every f***ing isekai does, where bro only gets out of bed in the morning for his adopted little sister. Which, in a roundabout way, does eventually bring him into conflict with the Machiavellian schemes Whoa. of his evil queen mommy. Specifically because said Emoto gets obsessed with magical girl anime and demands he go fight bad guys in a bad zero-code geos Code cosplay. Guess, but yeah. even that is way less entertaining than I'm making it sound. Am I actually the strongest gets three waste bins full of busted Amazon oh. Fire tablets, Syscon self-help books, and curdled demon titty milk. Look, mm. man, if I wanted to watch an anime hero lie around being a useless piece of shit, I'd just watch I have not watched any of this, but this is meant to be alright. And hey, so should you, because it's it's a pretty good show. Max wasn't always a piece of shit, mind you. He <laughs> did save the whole dang world from a demon lord one time, but when that great ancient evil reincarnates ten years later to check up on He's his not life, feeling uh, it anymore, enemy, is he? Uh, he ain't doing so hot. Turns out the kind of modern neoliberal society that arises in the absence of demonic invaders doesn't really have much use for an old-fashioned JRPG hero. Fair. Especially not one who doesn't know how to stay out of bar fights or keep it in his pants. Not that he's even wearing pants most of the time these days. Max <laughs> only leaves his cramped little apartment to buy beer and porn. Unable to bear the thought of their beloved nemesis living in such a sorry state, the demon lord <laughs> vows to help the hero shape up and get back on his feet. Ostensibly, so it'll be more satisfying when they finally knock him down again, but, um... Really, it seems like more of a romantic thing, but whatever ulterior hmm. motives they may have, with their help and that of their swimsuit-clad secretary, Max Oof. does finally Oof. find the courage to overcome some of his past scandals, put himself out there, oh, and get in a Look at those with a drunken demoness <laughs> wearing nothing but brass knuckles and a bath towel. Whoa. Then he tries to be a professional YouTuber. <laughs> And of course, he's almost immediately banned for taking the Demon Lord down the popsicle reviewer to cam girl pipeline in Aww. half an hour flat. Oh, did I forget to mention that the non-binary little gremlin can transmogrify itself into a sexy school oh, girl at will? Oh, nice. Because it can. Hell yeah. And yeah, I was not joking about the romantic tension there. Level 1 Demon Lord and one Love Moon it. Hero is a laugh riot fantasy comedy unlike anything else out there. Though, in a few respects, it does almost feel like the second coming of Overlord at work that fate denied us last year. I give it four dumpsters full of suspiciously eh. sexy cosplay outfits. Oh wow, yeah, there are the some cosplay that cosplay use, that's uh, the suspiciously the final boss, Which, as it turns out, are a lot more flammable than you'd think. You know, if I had a nickel for every isekai this season in which a victim of Japanese overwork culture gets cut down in his prime, only to be rewarded with a romantic entanglement with a... What is this? She was in a bunny suit. Let's go. Cool. <laughs> oh, it's not even a suit. It's not a suit. This meme. 
The two anime that weirdly happened twice in are My Unique Skill Makes Me OP, even at level one, and The Great Cleric, though Great they cleric. Really couldn't be more different in other respects. Unique Skills, more of a goofy, lighthearted, slice-of-life fantasy comedy where the blue bunny girls mainly after Protag Kun's massive carrot, whereas Cleric's a more serious, it right dramatic, and politically charged tale whose bunny girl catches feelings for the hero on account of how gallantly not racist he is. Oh, also, so they the both have bunny girls, that's weird. ...only healer in the country who hasn't been lured in by the siren song of for-profit medicine. Which is pretty based, I guess, but I, I wish that message wasn't buried in a show that looks like shit, sounds even shittier, oh God. it's written like... <laughs> also, only one of these anime has anything even close to interesting world building, and it's not the one that wants to get all serious with it. Cleric's exploration of its generic light novel RPG stat system begins and ends with, wow, it sure is easier to grind away for years at a tedious job when I can see my numbers gradually going up, whereas Unique Skill imagines what an economy might look like in a world where the only means of production for any basic resource is drops from dungeon mobs, oh. with Protag Kun's aforementioned OP skill being an S-ranked drop rate that yields, for example, oh. bigger Juicy carrots, carrots right? Bunny girls okay. Slide a wiggle. Look at a wiggle. On, Jesus. And also a gun, which is, you know, Whoa. pretty useful in a medieval combat. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Okay. Context and combined with the bunny girl, it's kind of given we have Ari Ferretta at home. Anyway. Outside the bunny girls, the only thing these isekai really have in common is a time to stat screen in the sub five minute range, but that places them both firmly at the bottom of the isekai barrel. I give the not so great cleric one artist alley dumpster full of shiari forever posters and soggy tissues. Something something OP skill whatever gets two. Also, the tissues are a little bit less soggy, so it might plausibly catch fire one day. My God. Now, based on what I just said, you might be thinking that right, this is. This works. This, this is stupid. This anime is stupid. If he's going to talk about the vending machine one now, this this anime is dumb. It's absolutely dumb, but it works, and and I like it. Okay, I don't love it. I like it. It's an enjoyable watch. I can't believe they actually made the concept of someone being reincarnated as a vending machine work. Right. Reborn as a vending machine, now I wander the labyrinth's sub three minute time to stat stat would make it even worse. But the thing about that is, it's a vending machine stat screen, not a Dragon Quest stat screen, which is totally different because I said so. Oh, okay. Look, pal, at this point in my life, I've gotten bored of more half assed fantasy anime tropes than you even know exist. So when I tell you I have never seen a Protag Kun fight quite like this before, I know from whence I speak. Boxo's ability to transform into any kind of vending machine that he used in his past life opens the door for a ton great. of incredibly fun and creative problem-solving opportunities, not to mention some educational ones. Like, most of us are aware of how cracked Japanese vending machines yes. can be, like the ones that serve liquor or hot meals like karaage and curry. But did you know you can get flowers from a vending machine? Well, I mean, I'm learning stuff from watching this. Like, I didn't know you could get hot stuff from vending machines in, in Japan. Oh, it's just like, ah, this is cool. Or oxygen? Or pornography? Wait, well, that, yeah. No, no. Solid no, not that. Anyway, that, that, with some that. of the stuff Boxo's got on sale, I even feel like I'm learning new things about his character. Sure, Boxo. Reborn as a vending we machine, believe gets four roadside you. trash bins full of Mentos Diet Coke bottles ready to blow. Okay, but just hypothetically, what if the only three ways that you ever want to see a magic guy solve a monster problem is by beating it up because he's the strongest dude ever, f***ing it, or all of the above? All Has of the, the anime above. industry just <laughs> abandoned those of us who only want safe, samey garbage where a Dragon Quest hero type dude saves the world and gets all the bitches? You're, you're joking, right? This is the anime industry we're talking about. Anyway, let me tell you about Classroom for Heroes. Okay. I can't believe it's not Isekai equivalent of... 
calling a horror anime old house full of spooky stuff. It's so on the nose that at first, I honestly thought this might be trying to like parody the genre. I mean, right. the tsundere character is only a tsundere because she's literally possessed by a demon. That ah. seems like the punchline to a hilarious joke, but uh, no, what this anime thinks a joke is, is when a cute girl gets addicted to donuts and then her actress does like an Eric Cartman voice until she figures out how to burn off all the calories by invoking her demonic powers. By the way, that's like the only episode of the show so far that's not just a backstory dump for one of the waifus. Honestly, right. I'm okay. struggling to think of stuff to say about this one. The best rating I can give it is a waste bin full of plain cracker crumbs. Damn. The only thing saving this show from being the most forgettable harem in years is the designs of the background cast, who look right at home in like a medieval version of My Hero Academia or hmm. something. Really solid character design. Wish the protagonists were as interesting. That's On that note though, Liar Rail is a low grade harem knockoff of the other other anime about a weird and cool high-tech school for exceptional kids that's all the rage on TikTok these days. Cla I've not heard anything of... I mean, I've heard of that, but I've not heard of this liar, 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 I've not heard of it at all. Classroom of the Elite. Boy, that segue sure was tortured. Just as a side note, I am aware that this anime is supposed to be called Liar Liar, but they wrote the title stupid, so I'm gonna pronounce it stupid. Another right, thing fair. they wrote stupid <laughs> is stupid, the whole dude. last script for the entire show. Okay. So like, there's this elite school island, see, and all the students there are rated from one to seven stars, and if they want to get more stars, they gotta take them from other kids in AR smartphone games. Right. Protag Kun accidentally wins one of those against the school chairman's granddaughter on his very first day, oh, asking her for directions, okay. which means that he could be expelled for embarrassing the institution. But luckily, the star that he won from her just so happens to be a special star that gives you the power to lie about one thing on your transcript, which allows him to pretend to have seven stars, making him the top class rep and the biggest dick on the whole campus, and also he gets to live in a big mansion with the maid, but if he dies in the game, he'll get expelled for real. So that maid, who's also his classmate, has to help him cheat by hacking into the games with the help from the head of R&D for like a... Okay, I kind of like... The premise to this. <laughs> this does sound really, really stupid, but it sounds... Huh. Major corporation who, for some reason, is just 100% invested in this kid's bullshit. Which sounds like <laughs> it could maybe be the setup for some fun Machiavellian anime strategery. But the thing about those games is, uh, they all have totally made up rules that the players can oh. change at any time based on other totally made up rules. So as far as our ability to understand any of that strategery goes, that. they may as well be hacking into the Calvin Ball database. Anyway, that's oh, the higher part of the title. The rail part is it turns out that first girl that he beat wasn't really the chairman's granddaughter after all, but rather her best best friend who was using the liar star to stand in for her because the real one was kidnapped before the <laughs> year even started oh. but then actually actually it turns out she's only <sighs> pretending to be kidnapped for five straight years while her family's worried sick so she can go to a normal school and be normal which you know uh, fair okay. i don't want to be here either so i'm just gonna let myself off the hook for clowning on all the cringy flirting that happens between the games and plot twists and skip right to the rating. Liar Rail gets two smoldering waste baskets full of bootleg catapult turtle and Gaia the Dragon. Yu-Gi-Oh cards! I know Still, them! as shoddy horror anime go, it could be much much worse. Oh yes, Rent-A-Girlfriend is back once again to prove once again that you can start literally every episode of your harem anime with the main dude literally running in a circle and still trick people into thinking it's finally going somewhere. This Wait, I don't get how I got a second season. That time. To be fair, the current arc, in which Kazuya kickstarts a movie for Chizuru to star in so her granny can see it before she croaks, did come the closest of anything in the manga to convincing me we might finally see some closure. Or, you know, it probably would have if I didn't already know this was coming. Ah! Oh my god! This arc is <laughs> easily the most competently written and the the last of story, but... It's not really saying much, is it? If you know your horror anime, you know we're about due for a new girl to insert herself into Kazuya's life about now, and the sexy cosplay live streamer who just moved in next door is 
honestly one of the most gaudy, self-indulgent things I've ever seen a Harem author write. The implications of that sentence should terrify you. Scared. See, Minnie <laughs> isn't just another hapless Kazuya simp whose unique set of skills happen to make her invaluable to solving current story problem and then, I don't know, we'll figure out something to do with her probably. Actually, she doesn't even want Worst K Taro. No, no. She's a simp for Rent-A-Girlfriend itself. The author's very own sock puppet otaku, so swept up in the romantic drama at her doorstep that she'll rearrange her schedule and help Kazuya lie to his current girlfriend just to see him get laid. All because, oh. as a super devoted gotcha waifu worshipper, she just can't help seeing our pathetic pay pig protag as the ultimate IRL role model. No, seriously, that's her motivation. She even calls him. I almost respect the wow. balls it takes oh, okay. to write a fan of your own story into that story. Like, knowing that your audience is already screaming, You like each other, dipshits? Just fk already! You just write no otaku if... into the plot to say that. Wow. I know writers who use subtext, and they're all cowards. If nothing else, <laughs> it's an impressively brazen way to push the plot forward, is what I'd say if she could actually do that. But remember. Oh, God! We ain't going nowhere. Rent-A-Girlfriend 3 gets what at first seems like a regular empty garbage can, okay. but then you realize it has no bottom? You feel this oppressive heat rolling oh, out of its dark, empty mouth. Oh. And when you strain your ears, you can faintly hear... Is that... screaming? Luckily, though, I won't have to leave you with that rotten taste in your mouth because there's another far more delectable piece of anime cheesecake on this season's menu. Oh, is this the one with the monk? I can't promise you Tenpuru, no one can live on loneliness's romance, will actually go anywhere. In fact, I would be willing to bet actual money it won't. But Whoa. at least the reason it probably won't is quite original and funny. After Akemitsu Akigami's dad abandoned him for a humanitarian mission to share his dick with the women of the world, the boy swore off romance entirely, vowing wow. he'd never be like that ging freak who failed to raise him and probably at least a couple more siblings by this point in the timeline. However, his decades of resolve falter after a near-fatal collision with love at first sight, and before he knows it, he's teetering on the precipice of a college playboy lifestyle. The horror. Akagami figures his only hope of beating his worldly desires is to abandon them along with his worldly possessions and bunker down at a Buddhist temple until this right. yeah, 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 yeah. puberty thing blows over. But of course... This is a harem anime, so it turns out that the temple's fallen on hard times and been converted into a naughty nunnery. Also, nice. his deadbeat dad owes those naughty nuns a whole mess of money, so he can't get away from the whole sexy situation even if he wanted to. Which, we all know he doesn't, and neither do most of his new roommates. Those roommates include, of course, the girl who started Akagami down this dark path of desire to begin with by being so darn irresistibly lovely. God, look at those eyes. Along look at those eyes. Oof, and more those boobas. Accident prone tsundere sister, Suyuko. Then we have Mia Kristoff, oh. heiress to a prestigious dynasty of wealthy European perverts who, like Akagami, has come to this temple hoping to purge herself of all those filthy desires, along with her best friend, Kagura Baldwin, who likes to watch. Uh, there's Oof. also a couple temple residents who don't really fit into the harem, namely Kiki, the Ara Ara auntie nun who's been watching over the girls, and Kurage, the extremely blunt youngest Alba sister whose seemingly sole reason for existing is to cause problems. She's great. If Rent-A-Girlfriend's a throwback to the worst excesses of early 2000s harems, then Tenpuru's a throwback to the best of them. A simple yet thoroughly entertaining story of ridiculous people doing ridiculous <sighs> things while trying and failing to not think about how ridiculously horny they all secretly are. Which, all told, makes for a ridiculously good time. I give Tenpuru four of them big cozy anime bonfires where they burn all the props and shit from the school culture festival into the school cultural festival yeah yeah one of those yeah, yeah yeah anime only instead of a school culture festival it's for that penis festival that you've no doubt read a weird ah uh, that's why it's all pixelated. that's all the trash we've got for you this evening and 
I do hope you've enjoyed rolling around in it as much as I did. Well, if you've nice. seen any of these anime for yourself, I would love to hear what you thought of them in the comments down below. Or if there's any juicy trash you think I missed, we are always trying to improve our menu's taste and selection. Also, speaking of taste, don't forget to check out Holtzkern. They got some really nice stuff, and they're offering a really nice discount. I'm Jeff Thu, Trash Sommelier Extraordinaire, which isn't a real job, so please buy a watch. <laughs> wow. Ooh, wow. We got some trash. It's on 100, though. I definitely would uh, recommend checking it at it's boss absolutely boss and the rest just sound weird and crazy the vending machine one though watch that that's that's good as well make sure you check out my etsy shop links in the description there for t-shirts and noise that i've designed and thank you to my patrons when i'll be naming at the end of every video i upload links in the description of the patreon page one dollar month as our support channel. greatly appreciated. Thank you guys for that. Thank you all for watching. What you guys think of that? What you guys think of this click like subscribe everybody leave comments down below let me know nice to watch the some future videos i'll see you guys all right, guys Nick down.